the beast. We've got a cross between Donkey Kong, a bit of Popeye, and some crazy climber. You're bashful Buford climbing up to reach horrible Hank at the top, who's holding your girlfriend Smurfette. Oh, I mean, Tiny Mabel. You're chasing him up the old mutton building. Don't ask. It's actually reverse crazy climber. You have to wait until the window opens before you can climb up. Watch out for these critters along the edge, and if you catch a heart from Mabel, you get a few seconds of invulnerability. I guess it's a dose of adrenaline or something. The boulders Hank throws hit these bumpers and might drop, change direction, or break apart. At the very top, send Gaston, uh, I mean Hank, plummeting to the ground. Rinse and repeat with a harder difficulty. It's not my favorite a magic game for Intellivision. It's just too much a variant on Donkey Kong, but missing that game's innate charms. Here, Dracula rises at midnight to roam the village's ridiculously large sidewalks. Beside your score, the status line at the bottom shows the number of victims needed for the night, the time, and Drac's blood level. Look for people's eyes peeking out of upper windows that knock on their door to lure them out. Chase the victim and bite them with your monstrous teeth! Police constables give chase when they see Drac, throwing wooden stakes that slow him down and drain some blood. But Drac can turn victims into zombies. Directed with the second game controller, they can destroy the constables. A white wolf will also give chase, but Drac can turn into a bat to move faster and escape enemies. But watch out for the vulture that can carry Drac away to his doom! And as the skies lighten to dawn, don't get caught in the light of morning. Dracula is the opposite of Beauty and the Beast. This is a wildly original action game focused on getting Dracula through his nightly feedings. Guide Valley the Avenger through the frozen landscape to the Ice Fortress to defeat Kaltkron and prevent an eternal ice age. In the first scene, Valley skis across frozen tundra through the stampeding caribou. He has an axe he can wield with a fire button to kill caribou to avoid being trampled. But killing a caribou summons the wildlife goddess who fires arrows at Valley. After the caribou, Valley must build an ice bridge to cross a raging river. He does this by using his grappling hook to move icebergs to the bridge to make it longer. Icebergs that run into the side of the bridge will break off a piece of it. But Valley can throw torches that melt icebergs that might otherwise hit the bridge. Valley will turn blue if building the bridge takes too long or if he falls into the river. Continuing to remain blue will cost a life. Facing Kaltkron's formidable ice palace, Valley must use fireballs to first melt the ice blocks and then melt the ice parapets to open Kaltkron's fiends to fire. Killing all the fiends melts the castle and releases the imprisoned Borealis and saves the world. The trek then resets at a higher difficulty. Multiple scenes make Ice Trek an interesting exercise, but the action is too generic to make the overall effort a good game. The most interesting mechanic is building the ice bridge, but it is also one of the more frustrating video game sequences you'll ever play. Next, we put iMagic's video game medical drama Microsurgeon under the knife. There are nearly 200 patients in the game, each with varying levels of ailments to be cured by the player, in control of a micro-sized robot probe. The player must move the probe through the body via the circulatory system of veins and arteries. Moving outside of these causes white blood cells to attack, sapping your power. The probe can administer either aspirin or antiseptic, or use the ultrasonic tool, all to fix problems like tumors and viruses within the body. The ultimate goal of the game is to improve the conditions of the patient's organs on the status screen to good. Once done, the probe must exit via orifices in the head. Keep an eye on the size of the medical bill too, stupid American healthcare system. Swords and Serpents, where iMagic takes a stab at its own D&D dungeon crawler. There's a solo mode and two-player couch play. Players control a warrior prince and the wizard Nilrem in their quest to loot a dungeon of its many treasures. In their quest, they come across phantom knights who can move through walls to try and stop them, and red sorcerers who hurl deadly bursts of fire. When a player is hit, they lose half their life and change color. If they are hit again, they die and are resurrected. Like a cat, they each have a total of nine lives. The warrior can smite the enemy with his mighty sword, and Nilrem has a possible nine spells including fireballs and a healing spell. He can learn these spells from scrolls found in the dungeon. There's a lot to this game, including a chest to store the found treasures, a healing lantern to regain health, and stairs to lower levels, all and more making Swords and Serpents a worthy companion to the official Intellivision AD&D games. Generic man rescues generic woman from generic bully. Can we call this one Horizontal Beauty and the Beast? You bet! Players must move right across the length of the island to the end screen and rescue Doris. 
clearance must avoid obstacles like coconuts hurled by monkeys, lava spewing volcanoes, and slithering snakes in order to catch up with the wildly flailing Doris. Clarence's greatest enemy, the left. The obstacles slow him down, but if the left edge of the screen catches up with him, say aloha to one of his three lives. Clarence can also be killed by rocks thrown by the beach bruiser during the end screen. If Clarence reaches Doris, the bruiser hurls himself off the bridge and Clarence gets another life. The game then moves to the start of the island at a higher difficulty. The Pac-Man aspect of this game are the hankies that the struggling Doris throws. Touching one, Clarence gets a few seconds of invulnerability. I feel like Tropical Trouble could almost be a sequel to Beauty and the Beast. In fact, they've even reused the same character art for Clarence and the Bruiser from the previous game. And yes, both games suffer from aping Donkey Kong too much. Pun intended. Witness the trials and tribulations of a boatload of men braving white water rapids to find fortune, fame, and maybe even a little love. Squeal! Similar to the famed 1972 adventure thriller film Deliverance, White Water by a Magic for the Intellivision has three peeps shooting the rapids. Although in a Magic's 1983 game, players have to face off against forest natives, as opposed to Randy Hillbillies. Now, if you threaten to tie me up, throw me into a canoe, and send me hurtling down a Class 5 rapids, I'd have to admit that I Magic is probably my favorite third-party classic video game maker, even beating out the much better known Activision. This is especially true with their Intellivision games. Activision, for the most part, merely ported their Atari 2600 games over to the Intellivision mostly unchanged. Sure, iMagic also ported their 2600 hits like Demon Attack over, they also made great, more complicated games like Whitewater to take advantage of the Intellivision's greater power as a games machine. From Activision, Intellivision owners only got Happy Trails and Worm Womper as exclusive games for their platform. But Imagic customers got quite a few complex games like Whitewater, where you both try to survive rafting down a raging river while avoiding rocks, whirlpools, and shoals, as well as play a puzzle game against the natives for treasure chests and golden urns. Whitewater itself is another golden treasure from Imagic, an involved and highly creative journey brimming with currents of fun. Welcome to Truckin', where you can race big rigs across the country or make money hauling ass and cargo between cities. This is one of the more complicated games for the Intellivision, illustrated by its overlay using every button on the controller. This video shows the cargo hauling mode. You can choose the game length, each day in the game is 2 minutes real time. Then pick your cargo, gas up, and hit the road towards the destination city. Cities in the game span right across America. You can see which interstate you're on, which direction you're headed, and what the next city is here. Watch out for other trucks. A blast of your horn gets them to move over for you to pass. Look out for maniacs approaching you and veering wildly back and forth. You slow down and move your truck in the direction you want to travel to make your turn onto a new interstate. When you arrive at the destination city for your cargo, stop the truck, select the cargo, and get paid! Of course, you also gas up occasionally, take occasional rests at rest stops, make U-turns, and avoid getting speeding tickets from the popo, among other features of the game. Trucking is almost beyond belief that they crammed so much into an Intellivision cartridge and managed to end up with a coherent trucking simulation is nothing less than astounding. And there you have it, all the console-exclusive iMagic games for the Intellivision. While you do have a couple of generic duds, you also have some of the most involved and creative games that truly exploited the advanced features of Mattel's mighty game system. Thanks for checking them out with me, and please like and subscribe, and keep it retro. <laughs>